All right, here we go. Here on a, on a Tuesday, it's game two. We already had one down. Happy for everybody to join us. Dylan Pescatore, James Mackey here from Mullet Arena. Game one is over. A big win for Centennial. They finish it off 7-1 to one final with the Coyotes. They take down Flagstaff. The Avalanche season is over. Centennial moves on to Thursday's semifinal. And now we play for the team that'll join them there. Mountain Ridge, the number two seed, takes on number seven, Basha Perry. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games that we're really looking forward to seeing. We've had a lot of conversations with head coach Ed Georgievich of Mountain Ridge. One of them I had after the All-Star game when Kano played off his head. It was just ridiculous. And I looked at him, and I kind of smiled at him a little bit, and I said, that's going to make you feel good. He goes, that's a great confidence boost heading into the second half of the year. And that's the, that's the truth, honestly. He's got two really great goaltenders rostered on this team, RJ Cavalcante and John Cano both, either of which you could start in a game like this and have a really good result with. This one we will see RJ Cavalcante, but still excited to see how he does fare in this game against a Basha team who we know to be scrappy. They're more than scrappy. This is a playoff team when you talk about Basha, a team that's looking for revenge, a team that's looking for really some comeuppance from last year. They really could have been right here at Mullet Arena. They're up 2-0 in that semifinal against Notre Dame with three minutes to go. They lose that heartbreaker 3-2 in overtime. And now, like Coach Aaron Burden says, everyone on that team is desperate to get back to that point. Yeah, that's the thing you want to have, right? You want to have guys in your locker room that you can count on to be a leader when you really need them. And you want to have guys that can help you along the way, guys that have been here before. They've felt that heartbreak. Guys that can help your goaltender, Austin Gerhardt, a freshman who's never done this before on this stage. Obviously, Bash has never been the mullet either, but they've been in those big, important playoff games. It's good for Gerhardt to have that in front of him, have guys who know how to do it and how to handle it, and really it's going to be great for their entire bench all the way up and down. We mentioned a young team with Basha, maybe an even younger team with Mountain Ridge, and they're led by a freshman, Camden Babin. Yeah, Babin's been, I mean, absolutely ridiculous this year. He's been a really good offensive threat, but he's also very good defensively. He's good at switching. He's fast all the way up and down the ice. Understands that this is a 200-foot game. He does everything so well when he's on the ice. Goals, assists. It's just been really fun to watch him all season long. Mountain Ridge, the number two seed. Another team like Centennial that last year wasn't their best. Six or seven wins last year. This year, they've come on, and they're on a 10-game win streak going into the playoffs. Yeah, both of these teams finished with a 7-14 and 14 record last year. The only difference really was goals for and goals against were, were kind of even. So I guess there really wasn't that many differences, but just still two teams that we know that are on the comeback this year, two teams that want to prove what they're worth, two teams that want to show that they're not here to be pushed around, even though they may be a 2 and a 7. Basha Perry, we saw him beat Notre Dame Prep a couple weeks ago in an absolute nail-biter of a game, something that we didn't even really expect to happen the way it did. It was a great game to watch. Bash has got a lot of really good push, a lot of really good pressure. They apply it all the way up and down the ice every minute of the game, and it's going to be fun to watch how they manage it here, how they use it to their advantage, and how they kind of push back against this Mountain Ridge team that we know has a lot of really good energy once they take the lead. Basha Perry in there, Navy Blues with the green numbers, Mountain Ridge the home team in the whites. And let's go through our goalies. We have two very young goalies in the sophomore, R.J. Cavalcante. He's got a 6-1-1 record, a 9-2-7 save percentage, and a 1-7-2 goals against. For Basha, and we mentioned it's the freshman, Austin Gerhardt, 7-6-3 in 16 starts this year, a 2-5-7 goals against, and an 8-9-2 save percentage. It's two young goalies playing on a big stage, and it's about who can respond better. Yeah, it's about who's going to be able to take the hit, right? That's, pardon me, that seems like a cliche, but it's going to be about who can take the hit, who can get back up after taking the hit. A goal is going to be scored in this game. We know both of these teams have great offense. We're not expecting a shutout one way or another way. But it's going to be really fun to watch how the goaltenders respond to those goals getting scored. And that's going to ultimately make the difference in this game is how Cavalcante, how Gerhardt respond to those pucks that do beat them, however they may come, whenever they may come. So a fresh 15 on the clock, 15 minute periods, three periods, and the ice cut after the second period. Basha in their navy blues, Mountain Ridge in the whites, a two seed Mountain Ridge, 15-3-2 on the year, riding that 10 game win streak. Basha Perry, 9-8-4. They had to win the play-in game against Shap, 8-2 win for Basha in that game. Brody Payne, Parker Stepien, Hayden Stott, Nick Wolf, all of them. Really showing up and showing out. Nick Wolf is the name to look at if you're Basha. He had 20 goals this season and the leader on offense, him stepping in and Stott. Yeah, to think that he was tied for fifth in Division I in points with 25, but he was second 
lone second with 20 goals is absolutely ridiculous. He was a guy that, you know, they could rely on whenever he was on the ice field. We talked about it a lot. You told me during the play-in game when we were kind of receiving text updates from our people that Nicholas Wolf is one of your favorite names, and he's <laughs> clearly a very good player as well. He is. He's not the biggest guy. You're not going to see him, you know, laying hits in the corners, but he plays with a lot of heart and a lot of physicality. We'll break here for the National Anthem. When we come back, puck drop between Basha and Mountain Ridge. All right, anthem done. We're ready to go between Mountain Ridge and Basha. Centennial's already at Thursday. What is the second team of four that's going to join them there? We're ready for the second of four quarterfinals here from Moat Arena. Basha in the Navy Blues. Mountain Ridge in the Whites. Cavalcante, the sophomore in net for Mountain Ridge. Austin Gerhardt, the freshman for Basha. It's Wolf. Stepien and Stott, the usuals for Basha to start against Gallo and Montoya for Mountain Ridge. And we are all ready to go. Basha wins the draw. Payne puts a shot into the blocker of Cavalcante. Englerth will try to knock it out for Mountain Ridge, a team that comes in as hot as ever. You won 10 straight after a 5-3-2 start to the year that you rip off 10 in a row. But they haven't played in 10 days. Basha hasn't played in nine. Gallo all the way across, looking for the man on the back post, was Nelson. Gerhardt directs this one behind the net. We mentioned the freshman playing in this big stage in the playoffs. Here's Nick Wolf over the line for Basha Perry. His shot into the stomach of Cavalcante, who will hold. The a really niche thing that I'm picking up on. I think RJ Cavalcante may be one of the only goalies in Division One that I've seen wear a chin protector. Like the, the uh, a throw protector, whatever you want to call it. That's that's an interesting note. Obviously, it doesn't have anything to do with how his play is, but it's just kind of funny to see that there's one goaltender who does it, and it's a sophomore instead of one of the senior guys on, you know, a Notre Dame prep or a pinnacle. Stott wins the draw for Basha Perry. Toss toward the net, sticked aside to the corner by Cavalcante. Big hit along the half wall by Stott on Levesque. Basha will chase this one back with Sherman. He's their number one D. You're going to see Sherman all day long. If you're a mountain range, as the shot went off the stick and wide, that's Josh Sherman playing big minutes for the Bearcats. Ernsberger puts it all the way in. Hughesby can't catch up to it. McCutcheon look to knock it in deep. He had two goals in the play-in game. Hughesby takes away. Two on one if they hurry. Basha gets back just in time to stop it. And Mountain Ridge can't touch up. They turn it over. Here comes Stott for Basha Perry into the circle. Got it down deep, looking to put it in front for McCutcheon, who turns around, shoots right into the stomach 
of Cavalcante, who looks as confident as ever to start. Yeah, what a series of events in this period so far. Basha's getting the puck into the zone. We saw it straight off the top when that puck was fired in on Cavalcante. It made him make a play with his blocker that sent the puck into the corner. Basha chased after. Mountain Ridge was right there too. Basha making sure that they're dominating the offensive zone. That's what they really want to do is be one of those teams that can, you know, dominate the offensive zone and get the puck in on RJ Cavalcante and make him make saves in this game. I just want to go all the way down. Icing's going to be the call against Mountain Ridge. And Basha with, you know, not your greatest regular season. They're not going to blow you out in the regular season, but once it comes to playoff time, they really play playoff hockey better than maybe anybody. Yeah, to finish above 500 is hard to do, right? You have four ties on the year, kind of a couple games that maybe could have gone either way with another goal in your favor or another goal against, but you're going to have to take it for what it was. You had four ties against teams in the league that – we talked about it all the way up and down all year. Parity was huge this year. Every team able to be impactful, and Basha, one of those teams that's sneaky good, Dylan. Sneaky good. Mountain Ridge comes back the other way. Saved by Gerhardt as he directs it into the near side corner. Brooks' his shot, stopped by his own man in Brown. All the way across, shot from the blue, what deflected up and out of play. Off the sick of Jonathan Lewis. And Lewis has really stepped up. His game as of late, he works really well with the defensive coach for Mountain Ridge, Lonnie Britt. And that a coaching staff for Mountain Ridge, they said, hey, we don't care if you're a senior or a freshman. If you can help us win, you're going to get playing time. And that's exactly what's happened. Look who's in the circle right now, the freshman, Camden Babin. Yeah, that's one of the things that Ed Georgievich is really good with. Obviously, he knows that there's talent in everybody of different ages, and he uses it to his advantage all the way throughout the season. Brown to Babin at the top. His shot was blocked down before it could reach the net of Gerhardt. McCutcheon will circle by in his own net and exit the zone with the help of Ernsberger, who looks to go cross ice, turns it over to Brown. Connor Brown for Mountain Ridge, pressured by Ernsberger, now Babin across the logo in the offensive zone. Babin drags, he shoots, it went wide. Now at the goal line, puts it in front, and the net is off. We'll get a whistle, no we won't as the ref fixes it. Basha carries it the other way. The officials keeping play going as McCutcheon will circle in the corner. Swiner looks to poke it ahead and does. This one will be another icing as it reaches the red. A choppy start to this one and Basha applying the pressure early. Yeah, Basha is doing everything right. Again, they're getting pucks into the zone. They're making the defense drop back and they're making RJ Cavalcante make saves. They're doing everything they can to get the puck in on net. Keep it deep in the zone, below the circles, below the hashes, above, you know, still the trapezoid away from that back end of the boards, but just trying to keep as much control in the game as they can here early. Issue will carry it all the way back with the help of Jensen. Jensen up to Stepien. He got the C on his sweater, Parker Stepien, the senior, for this Bearcat squad. Sherman can't get it out. Picked up by Haggerty. Taken off the puck behind the net. The Bearcats will start it from their own goal line, turned it over. That was Payne who gave it away to the Mountain Lions. Go big behind the net of Gerhardt and looks over his left shoulder. Three Bearcats looking to poke it out, and they do. It comes right back to the blue. Engler, his shot was blocked by Stepien. Three and a half minutes into the first. An even game so far, and another icing on Mountain Ridge. Has to be their third or fourth already. Yeah, and Stepien thought the puck got past him. He froze for just a second right in front of his own bench before he realized that it had trickled all the way through the neutral zone into the offensive zone. And he would have realized that earlier there's a chance there that he would have been off to the races. He might have grabbed an early lead for Basha. Here's Joseph Miller taking the draw in the offensive zone. He'll lose it for Mountain Ridge to pick it up and come the other way. Levesque gets it ahead for Hughesby, centering pass off a stick of Boyce Gaudreau and into the catching mitt of Gerhardt. You know, funny enough, Carson Boyce Gaudreau, who's the brother, of course, of Jackson from last year, he was the goaltender, so brother, now a defenseman, gives it to the new goalie and Gerhardt, the freshman. That's a team effort. Always a family effort, and you got a lot of families on this Basha team. Here's one of them. Issue will put it all the way in. That's Lucas, the younger one of the two, with Brady back on D. All the way across. 
Levesque will come over the line offside as Hughesby and McCosh were in there a little bit too much. Mason McCosh, of course, we know his history of the game. His dad, Sean, played with the Rangers, played with the Kings, played a little bit with the Phoenix Roadrunners over in the IHL, not the NHL, the IHL, the International Hockey League, back in 91. And he was named to all Asha first team in Division I as a defenseman. McCutcheon will chase after this one with McCosh playing it behind his own net. Turned it over to the Bearcats and got it right back. Babin gets it ahead. Taking a spill was Brown. Babin collects the puck. Going through his legs at the goal line. Centering pass and a save by Gerhardt. He lunged himself into the puck. And now Basha will come the other way. Ernsberger. Couldn't center. That's Lewis on the defensive coverage and a clear by Mountain Rage. Icing waved off as it went past Asalos. He's played 18 games this year for Basha. Brown to Swinar. Couldn't get it toward the net and cleared right away by the Bearcats. Right back in comes Brown, has Babin behind him. Brabin in the circle, all the way in. Shot was taken off a shin pad of a Bearcat as Haggerty was coming right off the bench. Brown down to Babin, sharp angle shot. Gerhardt hugged the post the right way. Astelos will try the far side and gets it out with Stepien. Stepien to the red, avoids the icing, gets it in deep. Gets his team a full change. Brown fanned on the clearing attempt, and Stepien came back and lifted his stick. Brown got it right back and put it in deep. Here comes Brady issue. Getting it ahead to Payne. Looking for Stepien. Coach Aaron Burden says Parker Stepien's as desperate as it can get when it comes to winning in these Division I playoffs. He said a desperate Parker Stepien is a scary Parker Stepien as well. Had a great regular season, 16 points in 17 games. Has that C on his sweater as well. Been playing great hockey for Basha Perry for years. And now his senior year. The Bearcats will collect out in neutral. Coming up about a minute away from the midway point of period number one. Where Hello will rim it around the boards. Issue looks to give it back. He turns it over. Hughesby in front. Hughesby can't control. Still loose. Gerhardt goes down, and the puck just kept jumping on Hughesby. Yeah, it was caught up in his skates for a little bit. He just couldn't seem to kick it to the blade. Yaramillo's shot was blocked down by the defenseman. He'll pick up the rebound once more. Hughesby, it was, it was just caught up in his skates. He couldn't get a good hold of it. He couldn't get the shot away. And as Levesque comes back to make the defensive play for Mountain Ridge. All the way across, Braden Horman cuts to the center. He shoots it, it goes in! Off a stick, Braden Horman! Mountain Rage up 1 0. Four goals in the regular season, and with 96 on his back, he gets goal number one here in the first. Yeah, Horman with just a fortuitous bounce. It looked like it might have gone off Boyce draw in front of the net, if not him, Sherman. And it ends up past Gerhardt, who can't make a save on it. That shot was fired, and everybody just kind of stood in front of the net. And we thought Gerhardt had the puck. He apparently didn't. As it passed him, it's 1-0 Mountain Ridge. A goal like that happened in game one, too. It was Switchenberg on that second goal, where went off a defenseman's stick. Unfortunate that it bounces in to the back of the net. And now we're going to get a whistle. We're going to get a roughing call in our first penalty of the day. Who are they going to take? They're going to take a Bearcat. It's going to go against Basha. It's going to go against Ernsberger. And a power play for Mountain Rage. So they score, and now they get a chance on the man advantage. We didn't happen to grab it on a replay. I believe it might have happened in behind the play. But either way, Ernsberger gets caught with his hand in the proverbial cookie jar. And now Basha's got to go on the defense and be down a man after allowing one goal. Mountain Ridge's power play right there in the middle of Division I. 15 power play goals on the season. Immediate clear by Basha Perry. Engler is that quarterback, that defenseman on the power play is Hughesby. Will carry back for the Mountain Lions. Ernsberger in the box for roughing. Babin 
Right at the half wall, back to Englerth who walks in. His shot was blocked off a stunt, and now a chance for Bash if they can control. But McCutcheon caught up in his skates. Could have been a breakaway shorthanded. He picks up that puck and then dropped it right in the skates of Englerth. Here comes Makash from Mountain Ridge. For Swinar. Bearcats looking to take it out of there. It's Babin coming down from the blue line to keep possession. McCutcheon pinning him to the board. Somehow Babin gets it back to Hughesby. Big slap shot got blocked to the corner. A minute to go on the power play for Mountain Ridge. We're going to have another penalty. This one's going to be a hit. And it seems like it's going to go against Basha. It was a hit in that half wall. They might take both. And they will. It's Babin and it's McCutcheon. They were battling in that corner and it got just a little bit too much over the line. Yeah, again, two teams that we know to be chippy, right? Obviously not in like a bad way. We're not trying to rag on them or anything, but they're both really, really, really yearning to win this game, Dylan. Obviously, Mountain Ridge up early here, but you can't let that get the best of you. Just because you're up one doesn't mean you want to be taking penalties like that and giving Bash an opportunity to grab some momentum back in their favor. So both of those two out for roughing. They're going to call roughing and holding. Roughing on McCutcheon and holding on Babin. Those two sit. Still a power play for Mountain Ridge. Five on four. Couldn't find Rahela. Comes back to issue. Who will clear it all the way down? Onto the blocker of Cavalcante. Chris Brooks. Back on D for Mountain Ridge. You got 25 seconds to work with. Levesque. Will drop it, fate shot, easily patted aside by Gerhardt. Basha will come the other way, Payne all the way across for Stepien. Shorthanded, Parker Stepien shoots, blocker saved by Cavalcante. He gets on that rebound, gets shoved down by Brooks in the process. Five more seconds on the chance, on the man advantage for Mountain Ridge. Ernsberger is out of the box, a successful penalty kill for the Bearcats. In the corner is Payne. Kicking it to himself behind the net. Centering pass. Nobody home. Back to the circle. And Miller's shot was blocked down. Issue shot saved by Cavalcante. Rebound was cleared out of harm's way. Nash's offense looking to get going. Picking up his wolf in the corner. Back to Issue. He can't control. And Basha will touch up. Mountain Ridge gets a full change. That backhanded pass from behind the net looked like it was going for a wolf in the front, but he had just been caught pushing match with, I believe it was LeVake in front. And Ultimately got knocked down to the ice. Didn't get enough time to get back up on his skates and get his stick in the right position to send the puck past or back on net at least. Gallo tried to take it toward the net. It was gloved out of midair. Wolf will pick up this puck. He's got no help with him, so he just flips it in. Under five minutes to go in period number one. Mountain Rage up one on a goal by Braden Horman. A fortunate bounce off a defender as this one takes a bounce in on Cavalcante, and he will hold. I know he's just a sophomore. He's a young kid, but... You know, confidence, he looks really, really good in net. Yeah, Cavalcante is very confident in his crease. Obviously, it's a six foot by four foot net. Cavalcante, one of the smaller goalies in the league this year, but either way, he's very confident in between the pipes. And again, if you're head coach at Georgia, but you gotta love that. John Cano's confident back there, Cavalcante is confident back there. Two guys that we know are really good goaltenders and can be counted on in the big moments to make great saves and keep your team in a game that is close. These two teams met up in the play-in last year. As it comes right back in front, Cavalcante makes the save. Mountain Ridge was up 2-0 in that game. Basha came back and won that one and moved on to all the way to the semifinals. 4-2 was the final score for the Bearcats last year. They knocked the Mountain Lions out of the play-in. Swinar on the backhand will take it lower to the goal line. Has Brown with him. Goes back to the blue. Down to Brown. Good passing by Mountain Ridge. Basha keeping him to the outside. Astelos lays a big hit. Brown will step in. His shot went off a pad. Bounced up in midair. Still loose and picked up by the Mountain Lions. Brown gets his own rebound. A long shift in the offensive zone for the Mountain Lions. Swinar looking back door. Cutting there was Makash. Couldn't find him. A lot of tired legs for the Bearcats here. 3.42 to go in the first. Brown takes a big hit along the half wall. 
Astelos now has some time and space. Basher just needs to clear down. That's exactly what they get, and they'll get a change. That very similar to the way we saw Campo Verde play in that first play-in game, Dylan. They take advantage of the fact that they can grab a change on icing. Basha Perry grabs a change on their icing here. They'll get fresh legs on the ice. They'll get a good energy push again. Mount Ridge doing everything right. Mason McCosh is all over the ice. He's flying everywhere. And they know you get the stick, you get the puck on the stick of Mason McCosh, he can make something happen and really hurt this Basha team. That's why you got to get fresh legs on to be able to keep up with him if you need to. Lewis's shot was deflected up and out of play from the blue line. It's really been shifts back and forth. Two minutes, you see Mountain Ridge take control, and then Basha has their moments as well. And that one unfortunate bounce is where we stand in terms of the Bearcats and the Mountain Lions, 1-0, Braden Horman with the goal. Yeah, no really determined, like, you know, offensive or, zone, offensive or neutral zone control in this game. Just both teams kind of playing in their own zone, and if it transfers back the other way, they got a good back check to catch up to it. And, Make sure nothing happens in their own defensive zones. Nice move by McCutcheon. He'll start it up, a two on two if they hurry with Ernsberger. A shot was deflected off a stick side of the net. Cavalcante will hold. The net also came off at that end at the end of the play. At that, so they'll have to fix that. But Cavalcante on it, even off the boards. Hey, he scared me a little bit the way he kicked back into the net. The puck came trickling off the boards with a lot of speed. Cavalcante saw that. Got the stick on the ice to knock the puck away from going in the net. Traps it up alongside the, the uh, net. Gets a whistle. Mash off the draw in the offensive zone with 2.45 to play in period number one. Lewis will hold behind his own net looking for Brooks, his defensive partner. Issue can't keep it in. Levesque will have to chase it. Icing waved off. Back for Bash's Jensen. He turned it over. Here's Horman, already has one today, looking to backhand it in front. Loose puck, Hughesby shoots, and a save by Gerhardt. What a pretty backhanded saucer pass by Horman across the zone. He knows Hughesby standing there at that circle. Hughesby backskates, stop right, shallow of the hash, cuts back around, grabs the bouncing puck, fires it right on Gerhardt, who tracked it all the way across the zone. Knew what he was doing, it makes a really great save on that one to keep this game 1-0. Mountain Ridge earns himself an offensive zone draw and they push on it with Go Big. Bearcats will take it and go all the way out. Wolf will tip it in. Bearcats looking to set up some offense. Haggerty immediately on the breakout. Mountain Ridge with Nelson. Caden Nelson's shot was blocked down. Wolf will go off the wall. Step in to Payne. Payne, Stepien, couldn't get a shot away. Sharp angle shot, off the board, shot taken, was blocked. Stepien shoots, and what a save by Cavalcante. Wow. Going from his right to his left and got a piece of the glove. Now Payne centering pass, and Cavalcante will just dive on it. That's the best save we've seen today, no doubt. Easily, what an opportunity for Paolo Wazinski to put the puck right back past Cavalcante. He comes in, uses his momentum, and Rebound kicks out to Stepien, who was in a great place to play the puck. Unfortunately, Cavalcante was in an even better place to make a beautiful save. Like you said, the best one we've seen all day. That's one of the best finishers in the league, and it's Parker Stepien and the sophomore, RJ Cavalcante, gets a piece of the glove and makes the save on Basha's best chance of the night so far. Rihella will carry it in. Paolo Wodzinski back for Basha Perry. 70 seconds to go in period number one. Gallo for the Mountain Lions. Looking to set up some offensive zone pressure. Nelson backhands it in deep for Go Big. This is the line that started the period. Stepien, breakaway pass for Wolf. Can he catch up to it? Cavalcante puts it into the corner. Backhand try from Wolf. He couldn't get much on it and allowed Cavalcante to get back into his own net. We had a very big league play from Wolf. That explains a lot of his numbers on the season. We saw it earlier, too. He was alone pushing into the zone, dumps it into the corner, keeps the play alive. Puts another shot in on Cavalcante, and what a pass it was from Stepien from his own circle. He went all the way across. It looked almost like a no-look pass. He knew where Wolf was. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that tonight, a lot of really crisp passing on both the uh, higher seed and lower seed parts. This game, especially Basher, really just kind of showing off, if I'm being honest with you. 
A lot of really crisp passes across the zone. Their breakouts look fantastic. They're finding areas in the neutral zone to pass the puck, push it over the blue line into the offensive zone, and they're getting really great opportunities because they're able to do as such. Batman loses the draw. Makash will keep it in. 15 seconds to go. They'll get another offensive zone face-off after the icing from Basha Perry. But the story of this first period, yes, Mountain Ridge scored, but their goaltending, RJ Cavalcante, has come ready to play. Yeah, he's been standing on his proverbial head. I think that's the best way to describe it. I know I say it a lot, Dylan, but it's, it's so true. Cavalcante with a 6-1-1 one one record across eight games overall. His numbers on the season weren't horrible either. A 1-7-2 goals against average, a .927 save percentage. So again, he's probably part of the best tandem in Division I. There's a lot of them up there, and Mountain Ridge has two great goaltenders. Cavalcante has played out of his mind in the first, and that's where we stand. one nothing Mountain Ridge after one. Braden Horman with the goal. To make it that, Mountain Ridge scores one. They get a lot of good goaltending. And for the Mountain Lions, what did you see, James? It wasn't like the first game. Centennial had a lot of offensive zone time. Then Flagstaff had their moments. It was very back and forth. Yeah, it was really fun to watch, obviously. There's the QR code on your screen. Make sure to scan that. Get your tickets for the state title game. $15 on Ticketmaster. All open for general admission. That was one of those games. This is one of those games, Dylan, like we talked about at the Open. This is one that we think can go either way. We think that Basha Perry is a great team. We know Basha Perry is a great team. Pardon me. We know Mountain Ridge is a great team. We've had a lot of conversations with these two squads. This is where the parity of the league really comes out to play is in this game right here. Two great goaltenders in net, two great offensive pushes, two great defensive units all the way up and down. This game will be determined based on who can take advantage of the zone time they get. Again, they're not dominating zone time. There's no one side that we're seeing dominate offensive zone time. But in the time that they're spending in the zone, it's going to matter who can take the most advantage of those fortuitous bounces. The passes across, like I mentioned, Bash is doing the passing really well all the way up and down the ice. Mountain Ridge has to kind of tighten that up a little bit. If they're able to, it's going to be really fun to watch. This could be a back and forth game, though. We could be here for quite a while. 1-0 Mountain Ridge after one. A quick intermission. We're about ready to go for we will cut the ice between period two and period three for a full ice cut and a full 12-15 you know, minute intermission. But we're ready to go for period number two between number two Mountain Ridge and number seven Basha Perry. Same time, different teams tomorrow. The 6.30 game, Notre Dame Prep and Brophy. And the late game at 8-10, or just about there, will be Desert Vista and Pinnacle right back here on the Asha YouTube page. Just a different link, just like how you found this game. What a nightcap that's going to be tomorrow, Dylan. I'm looking forward to that. Asha will control the start period number two. Issue gets it up to Stepien. Parker Stepien shoots it, went over the glove of Cavalcante, kept in at the blue line by Sherman. He wristed the lights out of that puck from far side all the way around, almost over the glass. Englerth looking to move it out of the zone. Rahela does. With the help of the speed of Nelson. Gallo will be the first to the puck for the Mountain Lions. Takes a big hit in the corner. Nelson looking to backhand it forward. Payne can't pick it up. They get it up to Stepien who will go all the way across. Here's Payne across the line. Payne to the backhand. Taken off the puck and taken down. No call upcoming. Good clean defense by the Mountain Lions. Rahela will start the rush. He will flip it in and go for a change. Sherman for Basha Perry. Turns it over in neutral to go big. Who gives it right back. He jumps over the boards. In return, another skater with fresher legs. Shot off the blocker of Cavalcante. Coming right down Main Street was Boyce Goudreau. On oh, just a whip of a shot, Cavalcante punches it out. Another fireball right from the center of the slot, and Cavalcante makes a great save. It kicks almost as far back out as it came from on the rebound. Babin with a dangerous centering pass. Wolf will leave it for Issue. Issue to the center. On the backhand, he looks over his shoulder. Got Paolo Odzinski, whose shot was blocked down by Engler. He'll try these near boards and get it. It'll go all the way down for an icing. 
Just about two minutes into the second period. Basha really needs to start to find a push here offensively. Yeah, we've seen a lot of puck time down to our left here, Dylan, in the first minute, 48 seconds or 42 seconds, whatever you want to call it. It's been a really interesting half of this, you know, really interesting start to this second period. I apologize. They've done a lot of really great things, and the offensive zone time is what's really going to be killer. There you saw Mountain Ridge takes advantage of that icing rule in Asha where they can grab a change, they get fresh legs, they know they were itching for it, and they ended up getting it. Let's see if it pays off. Sherman to Ernsberger, pad saved by Cavalcante. Directs it right to Hughesby, who will carry it out. Hughesby got, gets it past Paolo Odzinski. To the goal. Gora Horman, back to Hughesby on the backhand, looking to cut to the front. It goes back to Lewis at the blue, who shoots save at the side of the net, through the crease, and Paolo Odzinski might have saved a goal as Hughesby was on the back post. Levesk for Mountain Ridge. They keep applying the pressure. As Lewis puts it wide, Ernsberger will swipe it out. The first big, big test for Gerhardt, and he passes with the help of his defense. Yeah, what a great read on that puck, too, from Gerhardt. He was all over it the entire time, knew where it was, saw it, sure ended up on his stomach, but Palowodzinski, right place, right time. Hughesby was hoping to be that guy, too. Unfortunately, the defense was a little bit sharper than the offensive push was on that. Stott for Basha Perry over the crossbar. On the rebound, keeping it in. Here's Basha Perry. Halowadzinski picks up the loose puck. Nice move to the inside. Centering pass, nobody home. Jensen will come back to pick it up. The Bearcats almost turns it over to Hughesby. He went under his skate. Right along the wall, they do battle. Yaramillo couldn't pick it up for the first time. He will take it back to neutral. Miller touches up. Yaramillo shot from distance. Easy save for Cavalcante. Puts it behind the net. Swinar from Mountain Ridge will skate it out. To Babin. The freshman as he puts a soft shot in on Gerhardt makes a save. Bouncing puck gets all the way back to neutral. Ash is starting to find a push, but a lot of these shots they're taking are from distance. Mountain Ridge is doing a good job of blocking up that slot. Yeah, they're doing anything they can just to, again, get the puck in on Cavalcante. That's what they want to do, get it in the zone. Unfortunately, his defense is faster back to it. Than Makash the save, rebound try, third try, and Gerhardt got the third try by Swinar. A barrage of shots from the Mountain Lions saved by the freshman goalie. They really work it on their cycle game. Swinar, Brown, and Makash. Here's Babin all the way across. Issue can't take it away. Another long shift from the Mountain Lions here in the second. Shot deflected up by Brown, not out of play, kept in by the glass. Bouncing puck on Jensen. I thought that got out of play. I thought it hit the netting, but apparently not. That was trippy from all the way up here. Mountain Ridge keeps it at the blue. Swinar. Along the half wall. The period of the long change as well. Makash tries to keep it in. Bouncing puck. He gets there first and keeps the puck in. Issue will rear back and try to clear it down. Maybe a breakaway for Basha. But it goes under the stick as chasing after it was Gavin Payne. And it becomes an icing. Goes from a potential breakaway to an icing. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, I'll, I'll take either. Uh, Payne tries to make a play on that puck. He's got a great push into the middle of the zone. There you see Gerhardt with a great series of saves against a barrage of shots from him tight, just shy of the post. He's got the pads where they need to be. That's why there's so many marks on those pads, the saves he makes with them. But either way, Gerhardt doing everything he can to keep his team in this game. They just have to get the puck out of their defensive zone, find that offensive pressure they had to start this frame. Payne for Stepien. Rahela back for Mountain Ridge. He'll clear this one down and we'll get another icing call. Time against the Mountain Lions. 5.20 into the second period. You've seen some long shifts by Mountain Ridge. You've seen some quick offensive zone surges from Basha Perry. Yeah, a lot of really good time being spent this period. Though. That's what we talked about during the intermission. That's what we'll call it at this point. You're doing everything right, keep doing it. That's the big story in this one. It's, you know, both teams applying the pressure this period and trying to create opportunities for their team. Putting it out of play is go big. The faceoff will come back to the offensive zone for Basha Perry. 
And they have to find a way to get to those dirty areas because right now Mountain Ridge is owning the blue paint. Yeah, they're doing a lot of things right when it comes to pushing, right? They're, do, they're applying pressure on the net. They're applying, you know, just great push all the way around the red line, the blue line, everything they can to try and keep Basha at bay. And Basha's trying to break out of it so desperately. Gallo backhands it out for Sherman, who gave it right back to Go Big. Here's Mountain Ridge once more, going against the wall. The game picking up in physicality here in the second. We've only had one penalty all game. Very different from the first game. We've had, we had a bunch of guys going to the box. Go Big cutting to the front. Sherman can't take it away. Still with it is Go Big at the goal line. Tries to go back to the blue. Englerth can't keep it in. Good defense in there below the red line, but even better stick handling by Go Big to get the puck away from them and prevent a turnover deep in your own offensive zone. Gallo lays a hit. Centering pass to Nelson was missed, and Englerth will have to chase this one all the way back. Mountain Ridge already up one. Braden Horman with the goal, looking for a second. Hughesby at the circle. He stops. Stick handles to the outside. Still with it is Hughesby. Goes all the way back. Rahella will wait. Puts it into the open corner for Horman to chase after. A lot of tired skaters for Basha. Pass in front. Loose puck. Hughesby shoot save by Gerhardt. Rebound popped to the outside corner where Horman couldn't control. Here's Levesque. Turned it over to Payne. Looks to kick it out of the zone. Hughesby and Horman apply the pressure and keep it in. Dylan, we didn't see much of Basha this year, but man, did we miss out on a great goaltender in Gerhardt. His form is beautiful, his track, he's reading everything so well. Mountain Ridge just applying as much pressure as they physically can to try and get the puck past him, and Gerhardt slamming the door. Another long offensive zone shift. Big clearing attempt, Stepien will get on it. Icing waved off. Englerth puts Stepien into the boards once and twice. Picked up by the Bearcats, Wolf all the way across. Shot taken, blocker save, rebound try issue, shot goes wide. We have a penalty upcoming against Mountain Ridge. It could be on Englerth for that roughing call. They're gonna call interference. Englerth gave Stepien just a little bit too much in that corner. Well, let's see who they take. And it is gonna be Brady Englerth. It wasn't the first hit on Stepien. We're gonna see if we can get a look at that as they entered the zone. He gave him a little bit extra after, but this was the chances after. Yeah, that's one of the things that you have to be careful of. Obviously, again, like we talked about, these are two teams that are desperate to win this game. They're both chippy teams. We've seen them be absolutely you know, menacing when it comes to laying the body. You just have to do it in the right way to keep it clean and avoid penalties that don't need to be taken. First power play of the night for Basha. They get to start it up. They had nine power play goals on the season. In those 21 games they played, they played the extra because of the play-in game. Took care of Shap, 8-2 in that one. Just about 10 days ago. McCutcheon will take it in the corner. A big chance for the Bearcats to get back into this one. What a keep by issue at the blue line, taken away by Babin. He's a freshman, but he's really not a freshman with how much skill he brings to the table. This puck goes out of play, and the Bearcats will have to do... The face-off yeah. in neutral ice. You hit that nail square on the head, Dylan. What a great keep at the blue line. But what great rebound or return pressure, my apologies, to knock the puck out of the zone and force a refresh for Basha Perry when they were buzzing on the power play. Great defense at the blue line by a forward. Englerth in the box for a minute and 16 seconds for that interference call. And Hughesby will carry back for Mountain Ridge after the face-off win. Makash looking to kill some time. Bearcats. They go all the way across for Wolf. They find Stepien as they enter the zone. Stepien in the circle. Watch closely by Makash. Back to the blue. Palowitzinski's shot went high. Rahela in the corner. Kept in by the skate of Sherman. Mountain Ridge will try the other side now. Somehow kept in by a stick, and Makash will clear it all the way down. 35 seconds to go in the power play. Sherman behind his own net. Basha Perry looking to get something going. Payne 
Across the line for Wolf. Wolf cuts in. Wolf shoots. He went high. A lot of shots over the crossbar for Basha so far tonight. That might have been their best chance. Here's Stepien one more time. Stepien shoots and another save by Cavalcante. All oh, the sophomores really showing up big here at Mullet Arena. Dylan, I'm going to say this and it's completely impartial. Wow. What great puck tracking by Cavalcante. Goes to make the glove save instead it hits off the wrist part of his glove hand and knocks him between his leg, closes the legs to avoid it being pushed in his net. And I mean, Basha Perry throwing everything but the kitchen sink at him there and he stood tall just like we saw Gerhardt do earlier when Mountain Ridge did just about the same. Stott picks up the side of the net, looked to backhand it in on the sharp side. It was blocked down. Sherman gets it in deep out of the box as Angler. A successful PK for Mountain Ridge. Hayden Stott swipes it in. Mount Ridge is doing a good job of breaking out the puck. Here they turn it over. Stott for the Bearcats. Looking to feed it in front. It was Gavin Payne sitting there. Makash for Mount Ridge. Palowodzinski goes over everybody to clear it out. 4.45 to go. A low scoring 1-0 game on a goal that went off a stick and into the back of the net. Braden Horman got credit for it and that's where we stand right now, 1-0. Yeah, this is definitely one of those games that we were expecting just about to be the way that it is. It's going to be a long night. We're getting a lot of really great hockey. Could end up a tied game going into the third, but again, it just depends on if Basha can take advantage of the zone time they're giving. Do something with the offensive zone time. You're playing great pressure, but all those shots you're rifling over the top of the net. Bring it down just a little bit on the speed. Just try to lock in on the shot actually landing on the net. Gavin Payne will backhand it out. Had to be two or three chances already, and that were really good chances for Basher. But like you said, they're just airing it out a little bit too big. Big, maybe shooting it too hard. Is that, is that a possibility? Having that mentality, they have to have the perfect shot to beat this goaltender. Yeah, saves that Calvacante hasn't had to make. Right, obviously you do have to put it into those low percentage areas in the net, low percentage of save area in the net. But you need to make sure you're doing so in a way that's helping, not hurting. When you force a regroup on a shot that rifles from near side to far side off the glass, you kill all your momentum when it gets all the way out of the zone after the speed you sent it in with. You just have to lock in on where you're putting the puck as opposed to how fast it's getting there. The rest will come naturally. Lewis picks it up behind his own net. Went off his skate of a Bearcat. Haggerty will backhand it out. Issue looking to force it right back in. And icing is gonna be another call. A very choppy second period. Both teams know the importance of this game and that, you know, one mistake it could, could cost you your season and you could be going home. Yeah, one mistake that we haven't yet seen be made, right? That's knock on wood. That's, that's the big one. We haven't yet seen that mistake be made, but when it does happen, we will know which one it was, Dylan. That's the, that's the great part about this is these are two really competitive teams, two really high-energy teams, two great offensive teams. And I'm really looking forward to this last three minutes of this period and then the 15 minutes we have coming up in the third. Miller for Basha Perry. Couldn't pick it up. Makash for the Mountain Lions. Ernsberger lays a big hit on Levesque. 325 to go in the second. It's a very defensive Mountain Ridge team. They allowed the second least amount of goals, 47 in 20 games this year. Makash is centering pass. Went through everybody. Miller kicks it forward. Basha has to touch up here, and they do with Miller. That's a hard play to make. Ernsberg is charging towards the zone with a lot of speed. The puck ends up on his stick after it skips over the blue line. He pulls up and waits for his teammates to get back on side before pushing it in. Really good way to keep a play alive if you're able to. He does that one more time. Couldn't hold the zone, but gets it back to his defenseman. Sherman just tipped it forward. Hughesby picked it up. He was taken down, was getting up looking for a call that never came. Centering pass off the stick of Bundy. Went to Mountain Ridge and they'll carry it out. Levesque looking to cut through everybody. Sherman for Basha. The centering pass that didn't get there. Miller, the center, taking on defensive duties. Hughesby has Babbin in front. Got it to him, still loose and cleared out by the, by the Bearcats. 
in on Cavalcante, which keeps play going. He'll play the puck all the way in. A two-line pass for Cavalcante, finds Hughesby. Hughesby in front, Swiner shoots, it went wide. And we get a whistle as the goal came off. James, if I'm not mistaken, that would have been an assist for RJ Cavalcante if Swiner could have put that home. It would have been a secondary assist, yes indeed. He just rifles a puck deep into the offensive zone and fortunately, he had a teammate there in Hughesby who re-centered it to Swinar, and Swinar just sends the puck wide in the net, stealing an assist from his goaltender. Not that that's the big story, obviously, <laughs> but that's, that's a fun part of it. Go big right back in for Mount Ridge onside. Caden Nelson on the backhand, can't get it through. The Bearcats will start it up the other way. Strong pass in the offensive zone. Stepien shoots. And it went high and out of play off a stick. Never reached Cavalcante. That long reach of Angler has gotten the way. Yeah, that's another one of those ones that we talked about earlier. It might have gotten Cavalcante. I'm not 100% sure. You might be right. It might have went off Angler. It did hit Cavalcante. It did hit off Cavalcante. That's one of the ones we were talking about earlier. You can rifle the puck on net, put it on Cavalcante, make it go off him, and try to create an opportunity for a rebound that will get you a goal. Back for Bashes. Stepien in neutral, lose it to Gallo. Gallo will go to Nelson. 80 seconds to go in the period. Across to Gobig. Centering pass. Picked off. Right back to Mountain Ridge. And Gerhardt makes a nice save on a turnaround shot by Nelson. The Bearcats weren't happy with Gallo. Got his stick in the freshman's area after the play. But a big save by Gerhardt on Nelson, who got a lot on that turnaround shot. Yeah, there it was again. We talked about it earlier. Just a great track by Gerhardt. Gobig screening him in front of the net, poking the puck a little bit. Itchy comes to clean that up, but Gerhardt saw that turnaround coming. He knew it was coming. He didn't anticipate it. He waited for the puck to get fired on before attempting to make a save. He makes a really beautiful save, and this game stays 1-0 in favor of Mountain Ridge. Nashville looking for something. Only goal in this game came in that first period right at the middle mark. Brayden Horman got the goal and the only goal we've seen so far today. Here comes Issue for Basha Perry. Issue at the goal line. Tries to wrap around try. And he did he score? No sign yet from the official. No whistle either. And they're going to say no goal. Oh, Coach Aaron Burden on Basha is incensed. There was no whistle, there was no call. We have to see the replay here. Yeah, a great charge into the zone. And we're gonna keep an eye on our goaltender cam. Is just a great wraparound by Issue. He gets it around on Cavalcante. Cavalcante loses the puck in that sequence. We don't know where it is. Let's see if we can nab a replay for you again without missing any play here. But, I mean, just wow. That was as close as you can get. You wish you can go to that over goal or over the goal line angle. Issue was as close as it can get to putting into the back of the net. Cavalcante stands tall once more. Back in front, and it got deflected off wow. the stick of Brooks. McCutcheon had a wide open net, and Brooks stopped this game from being tied. 40 seconds to go in the period. Swinar catches up to it. McCutcheon will pick it up and get it to Palawadzinski, who skates to it. Two A-plus chances for Basha. Babin now. Tried to cut back, took a stick up high, we're gonna get a penalty. How the game switches, high stick's gonna be the call. Babin, who got one up high, you had the wraparound try by issue, you had the chance by McCutcheon, and now he's heading to the box for a high stick. Yeah, Babin just gets caught up high on a stick, it looked like I got knocked when he went to make that move. He's just trying to pick it up is, not sure who it was that they're sending to the box on that one. We'll see if we can grab it. Uh, it was McCutcheon. It. McCutcheon's heading to the box. McCutcheon goes to the box. He was trying to make a play on the puck. The puck was kind of bouncing a little bit. Unfortunately, stick gets a little too high. Catches Babin in the side of the face. And now an opportunity for Mountain Ridge on the power play. Mountain Ridge, their second of the night. 0 for 1 so far. Stepien, short-handed for Basha Perry. 18 seconds to go. Stepien, short-handed. Shoots, glove saved by Cavalcante. Makash from Mountain Ridge. One more try with 10 seconds to go. Makash to the outside. Makash's backhand try saved by Gerhardt. And he'll hold with 5.7 on the clock. That rush into the zone, one that I want to talk about, Dylan, if he has an extra man with him, 
there's an opportunity that that puck ends up in the back of the net. Stepien rifles one on, as you see, Makashi is great backhand in on Gerhardt. Again, a great tracking play by Gerhardt. Stepien rifles one on Calvacante that comes right back out to the slot. Makash, where he needs to be back to the goaltender, picks up the puck and prevents a putback. Basha Perry held scoreless by that man, RJ Cavalcante. Through two, 1 0 Mountain Lions. Braden Horman, the only man to find the back of the net. And full intermission, full ice cut before period three. I'm going to grab this real fast and then we can, we can grab our break. Dylan, it's just going to be really interesting to see how these two teams adjust to a full ice cut. You're going to have to come off your bench. You're going to have to go to the locker room. You're going to have to re-grab your momentum if you can. If you're Basha, you come out with vengeance, knowing that you have to dominate the offensive zone. If you're Mountain Ridge, you come out knowing that Basha knows they have to dominate the offensive zone. It's going to be really fun to watch. Again, make sure you grab your tickets for the state title game. $15 on Ticketmaster General Admission. Scan that QR code on your screen or visit asha.org for more information. All right, 1-0 Mountain Ridge after two. They'll have a minute 34 of power play time to begin the third. We'll be back for period number three here on the Austin YouTube page.
All right, here we go. Third period of game two. And James, I think from the first game, this is exactly what we want, right? A close game all the way down to the wire. This game could easily be tied. Basher really turned it on at the end. Yeah, this is kind of what you need, right? Like I said at the end of the third, the second period, sorry. This, this, this ice cut is really going to make or break this game. It's going to be about how Mountain Ridge comes out knowing that Basher knows they have to control that offensive zone. It's going to be about how Basher comes out getting that momentum built in their locker room if they did everything correctly, which we know head coaches know how to do that. They know how to keep their squads up and happy. We know Ed Georgievich from Mountain Ridge is probably one of the better head coaches we've talked to. He's a really great leader in the room. We know that Burden for Basha is a great coach as well. So it's going to be really fun to watch how they manage their teams during that break. It was 15 minutes. It was still 15 minutes, not on the ice. It was in a quiet room where they got to talk, and hopefully they did everything right to get their team ready to strike early and often in this period. They'll look to do just that. Mountain Ridge does start the third period on the power play for a minute and 34 seconds. McCutcheon back to the box for those 94 seconds. But Mountain Ridge up one, and it was not exactly the prettiest goal at that in the first period. No, it's kind of like perfect for this game, right? One of those games where they're not going to come pretty. It's not going to be a beautiful, oh my goodness, he fired a wrister from the point, or wow, what a slap shot from just above the circles. It's going to be that gritty, hard-fought goal. You're going to have to put it off a stick or a body in front. Cavalcante is standing on his head in that, that net for Mountain Ridge, man. I'm telling you right now, they have been spectacular in this game. Cavalcante is a big part of that. Down at the other end, I mean, there's really no words for it. Gerhardt's been spectacular in this game as well. It's been a goaltending matchup that we really, really, really were excited to see, whether it was Kano or Cavalcante. We knew it was going to be fun to watch, and we're getting exactly what we bargained for. If not, just a little bit more. Maybe a couple more goals would be nice, Dylan. But up until then, we're getting a really good hockey game, defensive, offensive. Everything is awesome. Let's kick off the third period. All right, 15 minutes to go. Basha starts shorthanded, and they need one to tie it. Down one to Mountain Ridge. Third period off and running here from Mullet Arena. Basha will high flip it all the way down. They get the clear that they needed. Stepien applying the pressure. The Basha team that's come back the entire season, we're going to get a penalty. And it's going to be a quick one. They're going to call Swiner for roughing. It's a matter of if they'll take both, and they will. It's going to be matching twos. Swiner and I believe that's Issue. Yep, Brady Issue are both going to head to the box for roughing. So two big players for each team, or one for each team at that. They're done for two minutes. We stay five on four, a power play for Mountain Ridge. Yeah, and that's the big thing, right, is we, that happened behind the play. Um, and unfortunately, it was just poorly timed. It was the start of the frame again. We know it's going to be a chippy period. That's not the way you want to start if you're swine or, or issue. Rihella for Mountain Ridge. The Swiner in issue for two minutes on those matching minors. Babin for Mountain Ridge. Looking for that second goal to go up to in a game like this. That might be all it takes. Turnover. Sepian for Basha Perry with Payne with him. He puts it high and wide. Off the wall, it's Paolo Wadzinski who's going to backhand it forward for Hughesby as he turned it over. 45 more seconds in the power play for Mountain Ridge. They're 0 for 2 so far on the day. Babin turns it over. Long pass looking for Stepien. Lightsing's waved off. Stepien will get there first. Needs some help as Rihella tries to take it away. Stepien centering pass as Payne was cutting toward the net. It went off the skate of Englerth, and he stops that opportunity shorthanded. Jensen gives it right back to neutral. Babin picks it up for Mountain Ridge. 15 more seconds to go in the penalty against McCutcheon. That started in the second. Babin just dodged a big hit, lost the puck to Wolf, who knocks it all the way in. Payne's going to get there first. He does battle with Lewis. Rahela takes it away. Stepping up here is Sherman for Basha Perry. They're back to even strength as McCutcheon comes out of the box. A successful penalty kill. This will be an icing against Mountain Ridge, and now the momentum could shift for the Bearcats. Yeah, Basha doing everything right up to now. Like, obviously, we talked about they're going to need to take advantage of what they're given and they took advantage of the zone time that they had. They were spending time down in the offensive zone in a four on five opportunity. They were shorthanded, they knew they were shorthanded. They were still firing pucks on net. They're making Kamakante make saves. They're marking up the pads. 
They're not allowing Mountain Rush to get a rush back the other way. Mountain Ridge to get a rush back the other way. And it could pay off if they do everything right here on even strength. Jensen keeps it in. Nelson picks it off. Jensen keeps it in once more. Big slap shot saved by Cavalcante. Lewis tied up McCutcheon very well in the slot. James, it seems like, and Nash will tell you the same thing, it's not going to be one shot that's going to solve Cavalcante tonight. You're going to need a rebound. You're going to need a tip of some sort. Yeah, that's what they're looking for there. But, I mean, you mentioned it. McCutcheon was tied up in the slot. They didn't get the chance to get that tip on him, and it looked like that's what they were looking for. It was a tip buck. Again, that could have been what the conversation was in the locker room. You're going to have to get a tip or a rebound to get it past Cavalcante. Haggerty for Mountain Ridge into the circle, saved by Gerhardt with the left pad. Nelson picks it up, tried to put it all the way back in. Shot from the blue line was blocked down. Wolf for Basha Perry. He has help behind him. He decides to go in deep. Bearcats looking for one. Mountain Ridge looking for what could be the kill shot if they score a second. Makash gets past one at the goal line, looking to feed Haggerty in front, picked off by the Bearcats. The long pass picked off by Brown. Hughesby picks it in on the backhand. Shakes off a skater. Brown now behind, looking to feed it in front for Makash. And cleared all the way down by the Bearcats. Three minutes gone in period number three. Man, Dylan, you got to give it up. Makash is such a beautiful player to watch play. His back skate switched to front, you know, skating forwards. His offense and defense are just so spectacular to watch. He's doing it all here today. It's helping keep Mountain Ridge up 1-0. Issue all the way across for Payne. His shot, blocker, blocker save from Cavalcante. It's a lot of one and dones for the Bearcats. They're looking to get a few more chances as the stick was knocked out of the hands. Oh, it looked like Payne that was in deep. Now Levesque the other way. His shot glove saved by Gerhardt. Kyle Odzinski right there to pick up the rebound and flip it out. And that's, that's the kind of bounce you're going to need if you're Basha Perry's offense. You're going to need Cavalcante to make that glove save, make a pad save that kicks right back out into the slot. Here's a three on two. They walk in. Shot was blocked. Still loose. Lucas issue was looking to get on it, and he draws a penalty. The issue draws a penalty on Mountain Ridge. They're going to get him for holding, and it's going to be a power play for Basha. Swinar and issue come out of the box on the whistle. Great camera switch there by our producer, Ben. That's why we love you, Ben. You do fantastic work. Well, hold. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you, Dylan. That might have been sold just a touch by issue, but it was just the right thing he needed to do to draw that penalty. Now Bash has got an opportunity to fire a couple really good ones at Cavalcante, take advantage of a man advantage, and get players where they need to get to get those dirty rebounds and those dirty putbacks. Second chance on the power play for Basha Perry. They roll for one already. Here comes Brady issue, will take it all the way back. For Stepien, Brown in the box for holding. Wolf across the line. The Bearcats looking to set it up. Centering pass. Sherman shoots. He didn't get all of it, and Cavalcante makes the save. They pick up the rebound and keep it in. Looking at it down low. Stepien shoots. It went high. Rebound chance for Payne in front. Picked up by Engler. He can't get it out. Kept in by Stepien. He walks in at the circle. Stepien shoots. It got blocked down in front by Rihella. And Engler, the two big D men from Mountain Ridge, blocks Stepien. Big chance. Yeah, a really good. Quick shot right back on, and unfortunately, Engler took it on a place where he doesn't have much padding right there in behind the leg. It might have looked like it went off the hamstring. That's going to sting for a little bit, but the pain is definitely definitely worth the glory. And here is pain for Basher Perry. Brody goes all the way across looking for Wolf. They get the tip in. Wolf at the goal line. Couldn't get the shot away. Rahela took it off his stick. He got caught up in the official skates. Payne couldn't pick it up. Babin will clear it all the way down. Great segue, by the way, Dylan. Great segue to pick it up from Payne to go to Payne. That was beautiful. 40 seconds to go in the power play for the Bearcats. Nelson applying good pressure on the shorthanded opportunity. Nelson still down a man. Lost the puck. Now Basha comes back the other way with numbers. Wolf across the line. To Palowodzinski. Still loose in the circle. They shoot it high. Another shot that goes high from the Bearcats. Pavel Conte standing strong. Payne in the corner. Nelson will look to chase up to this one. The defenseman comes down. Paolo Odzinski to keep it in. 
Out of the box comes Brown, a successful penalty kill for the Mountain Lions. Still 1-0, a true defensive battle here in the late game of two of four quarterfinals that we'll have over today and tomorrow, the semis on Thursday. Mountain Ridge gets a good clear. Miller right off the bench, swipes it right back in. 8.30 to go in period number three. Sherman can't get it past Rihella, and it comes in on Gerhard. How good has Kyle Rihella been in this third period? I mean, absolutely right where he needs to be, everywhere and all the time, all at once. He's doing what he needs to do, putting his body on the line to stop pucks from even getting to his goaltender. He's doing everything right by his standards up to this point. We mentioned it was a tough decision between Cano and Cavalcante for the Mountain Ridge coaching staff, and really there was no wrong answer with both of them. So good as Horman cuts in one more time. But Cavalcante has made their decision feel pretty good right now. McCutcheon shot save once again as he holds on. Cavalcante does, and then he's going to get in on the action. He was not happy with the extra poke after the play. He's looking to pull his defenseman, Lewis, off the pile. It's a very senior play there by Cavalcante. He could have skated over. He could have been mad. He had every right to be mad. He did get kind of chipped on after the play, but Cavalcante instead puts his head up, picks his head up, realizes that he's got to pull his man out of there, avoid a penalty in a time when he knows they could be costly if Basher were to get a man advantage. Stepien will take the draw for Basher Perry. The senior captain has had chances tonight. So far, Mountain Ridge has stifled all of them. Sherman's shot was blocked down off the leg of Swinar. Astelos for the Bearcats. Here comes Brooks. Picks up the puck and exits the zone. They get it past Sherman. Chance for Mountain Ridge as the centering pass came out to neutral. Loose puck. Picked up. Burnsberger tried to control and he does. He lays it in right behind the net. Yaramillo gets knocked down by Lewis. Mountain Ridge breaks it out. Here's Babin with a lot of time and space. Bab into the center, he shoots, it went wide of the far post, but not by much. Brown at the goal line, down low for Swinar. Back at the top, Lewis. Step, shoots, it went wide through everybody. Here's another one of those long Mountain Ridge shifts where they keep the puck in. This one comes out, Basher the other way, Yaramillo and Ensberger, over to Ensberger, back door for Yaramillo, and he couldn't catch up to it. A good chance as they broke it out and got past Mountain Ridge's D. Yeah, I'm not sure who it was that went down over the center ice circle, but man, what an inopportune time to lose your edge there, Dylan. It could have been dangerous for Bash as they were pushing into the zone, and unfortunately they were turned past the Armello just too far out of reach. Issue with 6.20 to go, centering pass. Poke check by Cavalcante. Jensen can't bat it out of midair. It has truly been a defensive showcase for these Mountain Lions. They've done it all game long. Not a lot of opportunities for Basha. Stepien looking to make one. Stepien in front! Oh, what a stop by Cavalcante again! Nick Wolf this time gets the decline. Here's Makash from Mountain Ridge. Makash shoots the blocker save by Gerhardt. The goaltending continues to be an A plus on both sides. Man, gotta give it up where credits to Cavalcante stones. Nick Wolf on a beautiful opportunity, and unfortunately, if Wolf could have just put that puck right back, he held it for just a second, could have made the difference if he would have just sent it right back past Cavalcante. Issue turns it over. Horman all alone. Horman scores! <laughs> Braden Horman, two shots on goal, two goals, and the only two. Mountain Ridge doubles up. And Horman catches Gerhardt reaching for this one. Gerhardt goes down in the butterfly, and instead of kicking it across, he just gets caught, leaning just a touch too far forward, trying to poke check it from Horman. Horman takes advantage of that, sees that, puts the puck past Gerhardt, extends the lead to two with 5.28 to play in the third. You talk about one chance at one end, and the other team takes advantage at the other. Wolf was stoned with the pad of Cavalcante. 
20, 30 seconds later, it's Horman on the turnover from issue. And Braden Horman has his second of the night. I barely got to finish my thought. It's crazy. RJ Cavalcante has really showed out today against Basha. Five minutes to go. Now the Bearcats need two. McCutcheon gets it in deep. Stott couldn't control. Levesque will come back the other way from Mountain Ridge. They're a number two seed for a reason. Today it's been their defense as Stott lays in to Levesque in the corner. Hughesby picks up the loose puck. Cuts to the center. His shot was blocked down. He got it right back. Makasha's shot. He fanned on it. Mount Ridge needs to touch up. Couldn't get it ahead. It'll come in and to the side of Cavalcante. Icing waved off. 4.20 to go. We'll keep an eye on Gerhardt in the net for Basha. Payne picked off. Paolo Wodzinski turned it over. Offside the call as Swinar was over the line. 4.08 on the clock, Mountain Ridge. It seemed almost impossible to get any offensive chances when they were up one. Now they're up two. You almost wish we had a quick shot, shot counter to go oh, through yeah. how many stops of Cavalcante has had. Uh, a lot? Is that is that a fair answer? He's had to make four or five really A-plus saves. Most recently on Nick Wolf right in front about a minute ago. Here comes Gallo the other way. Wolf skates back on defense. Centering pass for Nelson. He couldn't control. The Bearcats come back the other way. Payne. Payne cutting in at the center. Penalty upcoming. It'll be, I believe, against Mountain Ridge as Payne was trying to cut in front. It'll be a holding or a roughing call. We'll see who they get. This one's going against the Mountain Lions. Yeah, just getting pushed down in the middle of the ice. I can't tell who it was that did it, but unfortunately it just turns the wrong way and it's going to result in Mountain Ridge giving up a man advantage late in the game. We're going to keep that left net preview up on your screen. It looks like they're taking... Yeah, they're going to take Rahela here. Rahela to the box here. Yeah, we're going to keep that left net preview up on your screen, folks. We're going to try and keep an eye on Gerhardt here, especially in the 339 left to play. 2 nothing on the power play. It's going to be fun to watch how this goes. Power Let's play see. for Basha. Five on four. Gerhard still in net as Mountain Ridge gets the immediate clear. Well, that won't do it. They definitely need something here on the power play and then possibly pull the goalie and try to get another. Here's a chance. Stepien over the line for the Bearcats. They're going to break the brick wall that Cavalcante has built this game. Sherman to step in. Back to Sherman, big shot, save, rebound, chance, cleared away by Nelson, and into neutral zone, Paolo Odzinski couldn't control. He'll have to skate back to his own zone. And that one of those dirty area opportunities, that putback you have to have right there, a sharp angle shot right back on Cavalcante right after he made the initial save. Here comes Wolf into the slot, his shot, another save from Cavalcante. Go big, picks it up, he clears it out with the help of the boards. Where Wolf tried to pick it up, Babin does. Mountain Ridge will just kill some time as Engler picks it up. Man, we're really understanding why Nick Wolf had 20 goals this season. His shot is electric. It's a fireballer every time he shoots it, whether it's a wrister or a clap bomb. He's putting it on net quick and he's firing it to the hard, hard save opportunity areas. Swinar kills some big time. 45 seconds to go in the penalty against Rahela. Payne will skate into the offensive zone. Payne. Inside, outside, still has the puck in the corner. 2.10 to go now in the third. Paolo Wodzinski keeps it in. Looking for Stott. They find Payne. Payne to the center. Wolf can't pull the trigger. Paolo Wodzinski does. He put it wide. Rebound picked up by Sherman. Still five on four. Babin picks it off for Mountain Ridge. He'll come the other way. Two on one. Babin still with it in the circle. Save. Rebound try. Gerhardt's down on his stomach. Man, what a glove save by Gerhardt and a way to keep that puck out of the net. He fell over. Got lucky he didn't get a putback on him. Here's Payne, 140 to go now. They pull Gerhardt. Cavalcante can't hold. Another centering pass. Empty net for Basha. Babin goes off the wall. This one will be icing against Mountain Ridge. As out of the box was Rihella. So now we're playing 
We're playing six on five. Timeout for the Bearcats. Down two with 89 seconds to go. Man, those two events were almost simultaneous. Then Rihella got to the bench, and before I knew it, Gerhardt was out of his crease and on his way to the bench as well to grab that sixth man for Basha. This is an opportunity for Basha to capitalize. An offensive zone draw. You're up a man. Get into the hard areas. Get into the dirty areas. Put the puck on Cavalcante. Grab the rebound. Put it right back if you can. Some nice hold music here during this timeout of playing in Arena Villa. 89 seconds on the clock. Basha takes their timeout. Mountain Ridge with one goal in the first. Braden Horman, one goal in the third. Braden Horman. Two goals for him tonight after four goals in 13 games in the regular season. Braden's brother, Ethan, was also a mountain lion playing hockey, but he wasn't, hockey wasn't even his best sport. It was golf. And he went to a D2 school. He's a great golfer. Got to see him in person over at Airhood Golf Course last year. I'll tell you this, he can hit the ball with the best of them. And I, I know there's not a lot of similarity between hockey and golf, but I wouldn't want to stand in front of a slap shot or a driver from Ethan Horman. Hey, I don't know who you're talking about, but Happy Gilmore was a pretty good movie, Dan. I got to give it to you. Ethan Horman is, again, that's that family thing we talked about earlier, Dylan, right? Obviously, you have kids that come through programs. Coaches keep their siblings. They know. We saw Horman last year. Uh, Braden Horman in the D2 title game, he was pretty good in that game as well. This Mountain Ridge team is really built from their program. They have all four teams. Another icing is going to go down against the Mountain Lions. They have a great program. All four teams and all four, all four of them have been really good, especially their D2 team right at the top of the standings. D3 just suffered their first loss of the season very recently. Not only are they very good this year and have a run in them, they will be good to come, especially a sophomore net miner in Cavalcante and a freshman in Babin who just wins the draw. 1.20 to go in the third period. Engler picks it up. He goes to the empty net and it just hits off the post and wide. It'll be an icing once more. 1.11 to go and Engler was inches away from really putting a nail in the coffin of Basha Perry. And you bring it up, Mount Ridge has a really bright future dome, but so does Basha Perry. Again, we talk about how Gerhardt's a freshman goaltender. They do have the kids who have been here. They've lost out before, but you also have the kids in your program, D2, D3, both, who are just electric when it comes to playing on the ice, and they want it just as bad as all these D1 kids do. Both of these programs are going to be really fun to keep an eye on as the years continue to progress. Angler picks it up. Another face-off win by Mountain Ridge. Will this one reach the red line? It does, and another icing against the Mountain Lions. Basha just really can't buy a face-off win right now. No, they need to win one big. Obviously, like we talked about, six on five opportunity. And unfortunately, Mountain Ridge is just so good. They're winning the face-offs. They're sending it out of the zone. Basha's not grabbing a change, interestingly enough. Not enough time for them to do so and get fresh legs on the ice. They don't feel like they need them as of right now. See if it pays off. Stepien does win this one. McCutcheon picks it up. Cuts to the circle and another save by Cavalcante. A clear down by Mountain Ridge. This one will reach the red line and another icing. Avalcante is just putting the cherry on top of the Sunday that he's really made all game long. Yeah, that had a really good opportunity too. A good snapshot from the circle. A body right in front of the net, just not able to get a stick on it before Cavalcante is able to make a save. And he's doing a really good job of that too. Fending off bodies in front of the net, making big saves. Babin fighting for the loose puck. He gets it past Wolf. Mountain Ridge will chace after it. Icing is waved off. Hughesby is going to get there first. He'll circle the net. An empty net for Basha. Six on five. Hughesby looked to fire it toward. Babin's going to get there first. And just backhanded in. 30 seconds to go. The Bearcats need two. For the seventh seed, looking to upset number two. Mountain Ridge has played defensive all day long. Issue shoots. Shoulder saved by Cavalcante. Still loose in front. Poking at it, and he covers with the glove. They get the whistle, it popped loose after 16 seconds to go, and RJ Cavalcante has been on since minute one. Yeah, again, you see him there, he kicks back from post to post, looking for the puck, puts the glove on it, ends up face on the ice, the whistle blows. Mount Ridge thought they had that puck, they were gonna try and clear it again to kill more time off the clock. Good save by Cavalcante to keep his team in this on his puck in his crease. 16 seconds on the clock, caught up in the slot. Mountain Ridge, another clear, and it'll go down for another icing. We'll get another whistle. That killed off six seconds, 9.9 .9 on the clock. 
Yeah, they're killing off seven to 10 seconds which you did with each of these clears, Dylan. And this, another one that they just needed to get in the late moment of the game. 16 now down to nine. They're running in. To cr they're creating trouble for Basha Perry who can't seem to buy a faceoff win like you mentioned. They'll drop the puck again. An offensive zone draw for Basha Perry. Step in. In the dot. One by Gobig. Engler takes it to the corner with five. Everybody poking at it, and the buzzer will sound. Number two, Mountain Ridge wins 2-0 in the quarterfinals, headed by the shutout from RJ Cavalcante. His team celebrates with him in their own zone. Cavalcante, the star of the night. And if you're Basha Perry, Dylan, this is one you don't hang your hat on. You lost this game, sure, but you lost to a really good Mountain Ridge team like we talked about all game. You lost to a Mountain Ridge team who just was able to find the dirty areas and put the puck back on net faster than Basha Perry was. Ultimately, Cavalcante played off the top of his head this game. A battle of two really good young goaltenders. And Dylan, I'm excited to watch them moving forward. I'm also excited to watch them heading into next season when we know we're going to get Cavalcante and Gerhardt both back. Both one and the two seed move on. They send home Flagstaff and now Basha Perry, their season ends. Centennial number one, Mountain Ridge number two. They move on to Thursday. Now, they can't play each other because they're both the top seeds, but they will play the teams that play tomorrow, and we have some two great matchups for you. It's the same times as today, 6.30 and 8.10. Game number one at 6.30, Notre Dame prep. The three seed takes on number six, Brophy, and the Broncos will come in hungry. Probably the two best goaltenders in Division One. Without, of course, R.J. Cavalcante have anything to say about it. A great performance from him. And Matthew Gahan from Notre Dame and Max Milstein from Brophy. And then the late game at 8-10, Desert Vista will take on Pinnacle. And then we'll move on to Thursday in the semifinals. Championship, remember, 5 o'clock Sunday, right back here at Mullet. Buy your tickets on the website, asha.org, and scan the QR code. 5 o'clock Sunday, we will crown a champion of Division One. Centennial and Mountain Ridge move on from day one here of the Asha quarterfinals. We'll see everybody tomorrow for two more great games.